And we're back with some more oxygen not included. And today we're going to space. Well, we're going to start at least breaking into the space biome up here. I am really curious to see what the uh, the meteor showers are like. We, we put the meteor showers on the worst possible, so uh, I'm going to be really cautious here going up. We may want to be really careful because we may accidentally get ourselves duped against trapped out here. And it's not going to be one of those ones you dig up and just don't pay attention. I'm going to have to keep my eyes focused clearly on this for long periods of time. Well, we've broken through to the vacuum area of space, and you can see the sheer quantity of damage that's been done to the upper crust here. I think... Yeah, I think those uh, meteor showers are containing a bunch of slime and random stuff as well, and also there appears to be ice chunks and all sorts of little bits and bobs. This is going to make things more complicated. Yeah, in fact, let's make these priority sixes up here. We want to get up to the top as quick as we can so we can start walling in. Simultaneously, what I'm doing here, though, is I'm uh, digging all the way to one side of the map. The left side is the closest. I, well, I was initially going to go right, but left is far closer, so we'll head this direction. Now, the reason we want to do this is we want to find the edge of the map so we can start lining up bunker doors. And when it comes to the bunker doors, have we not researched bunker doors yet? Seriously? How can we not have researched bunker doors? Never mind. They're in here under base. Never mind. Okay, so, bunker doors. What I want to do is I want to line them up with the edge of the map, and then I'll know exactly where I am. I normally do that off to the side, but... Eh. We're, we're playing casual, so what we'll do is we'll cut across here, find it, then we can line it up, know exactly where we want the bunker door so we don't end up missing when you go to either side. I've had it before where they don't quite quit ni fit nice, and it's just a minor annoyance. I mean, it's not the end of the world, it's just, you know, if you can avoid it, why not? We look to have just found the top of the map. Excellent. Now, because of the way these things are falling, I do want to put bunker doors right up against the edge. I wanna, we might want to move these down a bit. Normally I would plop them right up against the edge and not care, but because of these new weirder meteor showers, I think we'll give, us a, give ourselves a little bit of space to work with. And we have not quite hit the edge of the map so that we can figure out where we're supposed to put those bunker doors. This might take another moment. Oh, and someone has dug up a shovel leg, which is fine. We have it set up so that all shovel legs are automatically dumped down here. Perfect. That should make sure that we never run out of a wild supply. Plus, it's just free meat. Those things drop 10 kilos of meat and, well, yeah, there's no point in not grabbing the eggs. As well as that, we designed our airlock out of obsidian, which is one of the only stone types they can't burrow through. So this thing is walled in so that the, uh, the shovels up here can't get down into our base and start causing havoc by dumping regolith everywhere. And we've got a pneumatic door here. That stops them from passing through, doesn't matter what it's made of. Uh, they can't dig to Abyss Light either, so as long as we don't break the Abyss Light anywhere, they should be trapped up here. In fact, where are you? Let's go show navigation. And you'll notice they can't get down into our base. They're trapped in the top of the map, which is fine. And, ooh, you can actually see a bunch of places we couldn't. Hmm. Well, good to know. Okay, uh, someone want to get over here and finish this off. I want to get all the way to the edge of the map. We don't technically need to, but... I mean, completionist streak and all that. Okay, then we get to figure out how the bunker doors go down. Oh, so they can fit to about there. Then we just sort of rotate all the way back to here, and then we know exactly where those bunker doors have to go up top. In fact, that's pretty handy right about there. No, damn it, that's off. This is sort of our beachhead into uh, taking care of space. The first thing we do is put up some bunker doors, get ourselves a little bit of uh, protection. Then what we're going to do is get some storage bins up here. We're using mesh copper ore tiles because, well, there's copper ore all over the place down here. Nice and close by. And once we get ourselves a couple of these bins down, then what we do is we fill them up with steel and igneous rock. We're going to need lots of steel up here. Uh, and as well as that, these things only come in 500 kilo chunks. So we don't want our duplicates fire carrying over 500 kilos at a time or trying to carry over a few ladder chunks at a time. That's just really slow and painful. So instead, we're going to stockpile all the necessary resources here the duplicates can start building stuff, pop back, grab it, and just it speeds things along dramatically. Otherwise, you're going to have them inside your base, grab some stuff, run out here, run all the way back. Because they can carry about almost, what, a ton to two tons, depending on their skills, it's just far easier if you fill up the storage bins first. And this way we can start the production of all these ladders without everyone having to run miles away for this stuff. Oh, and then once you've got the ladders dead, we give them priority five. We then grab bunker doors, make them priority six. That means the moment they get a chance to make the bunker doors, they will. So they're going to try and protect themselves from the incoming meteors first. We haven't got hit by a meteor shower first, but it's good to sort of get the, the bunker doors up faster than the ladders you're putting under them. That way the meteors can't fall on top of them. In theory. In theory. All right, let's let this play out. I want to seal off space as quickly as possible. 
We've been really lucky so far in that there have been no meteor showers because I had no idea what the weather was like when we were coming up. Well, this has gone disturbingly well. There has been literally zero meteor showers. None. I'm I'm actually mildly disappointed that this happened, hasn't kicked in yet. Uh, we're still building this up as much as we can, and down here we're going to, well, we're going to core out this entire area. Everything touching the abyssalite, like the whole way, we're just going to rip it all out. Namely because there's shovels in there and shovel eggs, and we're going to take all those shovel eggs and put them into our little storage section down here. I mean... They're a valuable source of meat. We can't let them just hang around and do nothing. Uh, at the same time, I made a few changes in here. I have installed radiation lamps. Now, uh, the reason I installed the radiation lamps is, well, we would like to get some mutated seeds at some point, and, well, what we can do is hook these up when someone's doing a bit of harvesting. This cranks up the rads. Uh, so there's 389 rads there. It's not going to be great for the water ones. The water absorbs quite a bit. But hopefully we can get the odd mutated seed by doing it this way. And this is not... The most efficient way of doing things uh, the reason being okay we'll turn that on as well uh well we by doing it this way we have to manually come along when the plants are getting harvested not exactly very hands-off approach i must admit but it does give us the opportunity to potentially get some seeds now i really should have designed these more with radiation in mind and uh, what is your rad levels from standing there Rad dose is not that bad. What we could do is put on some sort of uh, motion sensor to only turn this on when they're coming in here to harvest. Uh, but that might be awkward. We'll have to see. Uh, how are you doing? Come on, give us, a, give us a seed. No, no radiation mutated seeds at all. Not a single one. Well, let's turn those off again then. And just about done over this end. This is the last of them. And this actually lines up perfectly. For example, if we grab just a normal bunker tile... We can't squeeze anything else in here. It fits bunker door to bunker door from one side to the other. That's why I try and line them up beforehand. Once I didn't, then it was just... I I was either going to have to deconstruct all the bunker doors and move them all one or two tiles to a different direction. I'm like, no, 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 never again. So from now on, I always check to see which side is which. Well, I check one of the sides and then build from there. So perfect. We got them all in one run all the way from one side to the other. Now we just got to core out all of this area. Uh, we don't need to, but I would like to get it done now. Hmm... Actually, we're going to need to get a rocket sent up into space as well, which means we'll need to pick out a location. I would like to make sure we've cleared out enough space for it, though, so this, this has all got to go. Oh, hey, there's actual meteors falling, and it's just regular ones. Regulus? That's it. Huh. And it's boiling hot regulus, too. Well, that's going to make things a little bit warmer up top. That's fine, that should hopefully help cut down on the radiation. We're getting about 93 rads leaking through, but now that should cut it down in locations. Eh. Well, it wasn't that... It doesn't matter that much. We haven't got radiation levels cranked up to ridiculous, so we're okay on the radiation front, at least for now. All right, I'm going to get back to just uh, coring this out. Okay, oh, and I'm going to plug these in. We want... Uh, we would like this radiation lamp on because we're about to harvest these sleet wheat, and if we get ourselves some exuberant sleet wheat, I would be very happy. Uh, anything else looking like it's ready to harvest? We have to automate this in some way. Uh, later, later. For now, we got to finish this off. Well, we've got some of this finished, but not all. But I'm thinking we'll take a small little detour. I set up a tiny bit of automation down here. Basically, we've got some motion sensors hooked up, so if duplicates are standing on any of these tiles, it activates the radiation lamps. True, we're only harvesting from the... It'll only turn on for the first three sleet wheat, but I figure they're the ones going to be getting the most radiation anyway. Same up here, the first three, and over here we've actually got a little bit more. We've hooked up two of them, because why not? And a little bit of something similar down here with the mushrooms. And uh, this one was a little bit more awkward. If they stand it... Uh, you know what? It doesn't matter. It'll probably work out okay-ish. <laughs> if we get a few um, mushrooms that are actually mutated, that would be great as well. I mean, it's not a huge thing, but it would be nice. Now... Up here, we want to put in rockets. However, I can never remember how high you're supposed to make the rockets. Is it like 40 tiles high, or... Just, just one moment. We exit the game, enable debug, restart in a save, and then what we're going to do is we're going to actually build a rocket, just to make sure we've counted up correctly. I pretty much have to do this every time because I always forget where to place it. One second. Looks like it's 37 tiles all the way to the top. Now, that's including the little thing down here. So it's a 35-tile tall rocket for either the petroleum or the hydrogen. 
good to know. It's just like, I can never remember that. And you're always better off placing your first rocket. Like, your first rocket's going to be short. You're going to be using one of the smaller rocket types. But you might as well start putting them at the same location you're going to put all the rest. So you can keep everything in a nice, neat row. All right, now I just got to go and remove that debug file and go back and reload and, ah, the usual. I maybe stopped and did just a little bit more excavation. I mean, how can you not? There's just all this stuff that needs digging out. And I should probably get around it. Oh, and they're still picking up all the ice and snow and stuff out here. And the slime, there's just loads of random junk. Hey, but we have put together ourselves a rocket module and the height is exactly... 38 tiles below that, or 37 tiles. That is exactly perfect for some sort of hydrogen, all of those engines that we care about. Now, next up, we want to get inside this spacefarer module and actually construct ourselves some sort of research uh, mobile rocket thing. And I went looking for tutorials online for this, and it turns out the only ones I could find were, well, like, mine, really. <laughs> I was kind of expecting these things to have evolved a lot, but not much has changed, it seems. So, let's go back to a golden oldie. This might take a minute, and it will make more sense as it gets built. Yeah, I remember spending hours trying to figure out how to design this and make it easily upgradable depending on what technology you had, but, you know, all of that effort in the past has paid off, because I just went back and looked at it and went, oh, yeah, 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 I can just copy this one, it's perfect. Well, maybe not perfect, but it'll do the job quite nicely, I think. While this is getting constructed, we might want to take care of a few things in the background. We're probably going to want some oxalite. Uh, oxide is one of the best things to stick in those, so... Hmm, where are we going to stick our oxide production? Maybe over here? Yeah, we'll have to move some power wires, but I think a little bit of oxide production wouldn't hurt right about now. This is going to be blindingly stupidly simple. Um, this produces oxalite. You just imp input gold, you input oxygen, it spits out oxalite. Oxalite falls to the ground. Now, the thing is, you don't want that oxalite off-gassing. And oxalite will off-gas at 1.8 kilos of gas pressure or less. So we've just set up an atmosphere sensor here, and if the gas pressure goes below 2.2 kilos, this thing spits out some oxygen. Problem solved. We don't have to worry about uh, oxygen pressure around this location. So this can never off-gas. In fact, let's stick that up to a level 6 and get the rest of the oxalite we have lying around the map. We've got some oxalite that we dug up earlier and lots of other random junk around the map. There's all these oxalite spirals. Do you have any left, actually? Never mind. We got... Oh, wait, nope. There's a bunch of oxalite right there. So we got just about all the oxalite on the map. Doesn't matter. This should produce more than enough, at least for our early science attempts. In fact, let's see how our rocket is doing. Uh, you should be just about finished. Actually, you're pretty much completely finished. Okay, we're going to need a toilet for you right about there. And then we're going to need to fill this with water. We're going to need to fill this with oxalite. We're going to need plastic for the data collection. And we're going to need a refrigerator. And uh, the whole reason for this thing is just, well, this is a bedroom. This is going to be a dining room once I remember to put in a mess table. Right about there. So this will be a dining room, to give everyone a, which will give the duplicate a nice big bonus. We're not going to be using the telescope early on. We can't disable that building. And we're going to need to get our hands on some glass because we're going to need to put a couple of solar panels on this. It'll give us about 120 watts. See, what's the power draw on those things? Yeah, so we can only really run one or the other. It's fine. We'll figure it out. We're going to need a little glass. So I think a glass forge down here. It's going to dump its glass on the ground. We do have a cooling loop passing through here, so it should be fine. That'll cool down the glass, and we should end up with enough to make our solar panels. We're going to need... Oof, I think it's four, eight per solar panel, so let's just do 32 pieces of glass. Done. And we'll even chuck some sand in here. That puts us up to 200 glass. So, let's see how many solar panels we should squeeze on here. I probably should have went with the steam capsule, actually. That probably would have been easier, but, eh, well, it's just putting CO2 on this thing is so much easier. Hey, you. Eh, give me a solar panel. Yeah, it's 200 kilos a piece. Yeah, we'll have the second one in a minute. But we also need to get carbon dioxide up here so we can launch this thing into the air. And I know exactly where to get that carbon dioxide from. You see, I turned off the carbon skimmer there a while ago when I knew we were going to space so that we could collect a whole bunch of carbon dioxide down here. So that means we need to get that all the way through our base, all the way to the top of the map over there. That's going to be a long pipe run. But we have a good team. I'm sure they can manage it. Perfect. And this will keep pumping CO2 out of here until these two gas sensors can't detect carbon dioxide anymore. Once they can't detect carbon dioxide anymore, they'll uh, they'll shut this gas pump off. And that should mean we'll be able to suck out all of the carbon dioxide necessary, uh, well, as much carbon dioxide as we need to fill the rocket. And we should only need to use this rocket once. 
just to get enough research to get us to the next few levels. And you. We want to add on one more solar panel. There, that'll give us 120 watts. Perfect. And on the inside here, let's go over a quick review. We've got a fridge here that's going to hold the food. Uh, yeah, we'll worry about the food in a minute. We've got five tons of plastic that's going to get fed into the Orbital Data Collection Lab. Uh, we've got a toilet. This is going to need to be filled with water, though. And that toilet will make sure, well, that, you know, they can use their bathroom in space. Uh, we've got a gas pump down here. This is going to filter out the carbon dioxide and dump it out into the background of space. This thing is set to detect, oh, what is it, oxygen. We need to set this to detect oxygen. As long as that detects oxygen, it will send a green... Oh, damn it. Is that the right one, or is it not oxygen? Yeah, we'll figure it out. Oh, yeah. so that should mean everything but oxygen should be filtered back into the capsule, or oxygen should be filtered back into the capsule, and everything else will be figured, filtered out. And done. Oh, I mean, I've seen a party phone line for a little bit of recreation. Also, it makes this uh, whole room... What the? Laboratory? Two science buildings? Oh, man, they've changed this. Huh. So things have changed. Hmm, let me think for a minute. Never mind, we were just missing the actual po uh, potted plant or the decor item. And I haven't actually finished in that little... Ah, uh, pipe there. But once that pipe's in, we'll restore in the last of it. Looks like due to the changes in rooms, you can't have two science buildings in an area or it overwrites the mess hall. Ah, uh, which is sort of a pity, but it doesn't matter. We'll just leave the resources there and we can build a telescope if we want. It's just not ideal. Oxlite wise we're going to crank this up to a 7. Uh, this means all our oxlite should be dumped in here and this place should start to get oxygenated because right now it's empty. There's no actual gas pressure in here at all. It is a complete vacuum. And... Done. And yeah, gas is looking like, yep, spreading out. Perfect. Then that means this should eventually come online and start spreading out its lovely germs. Well, that'll help keep our duplicate happy because we're not going to be able to feed them good while they're here. Not at all at all. For edible foods, we're going to give them the only thing we've made that can't go off. And by made, I mean, well, we didn't actually make it. So, yeah, muckroot. They're going to get all the muckroot we've got lying around the place. I mean, we've, we've got about 100,000 calories of this stuff. They can hopefully live on it and their morale won't plummet too hard. We could put together berry sludge, but that's just too much effort. I think, I think we've got just about everything we need. Now we just got to fill up the water pipes. And maybe get a little bit of electricity in here. Now, uh, for the electricity, we've run the power spine all the way up to the top of the map. In fact, our power spine is, yeah, top to bottom. All the way. We're still technically running on geothermal. I mean, okay, a chunk of it's going to come off of the leftover hydrogen that's coming from our oxygen production. But looking down here, yeah, we're, not, we're, we're barely taking any temperature out of this at all. I mean, over here, what are we looking at? So this would be... Actually, no, that is a bad example. That place is actually cooling down. Let's go over to this section. It's about 1559 is where it would have started, and right now we're down to 1482, and we're 465 cycles in. So we've got a fair bit of heat left in this to extract before it even starts to solidify. You're looking pretty good, and if we go up to the top here, we want to run power, which I think we're almost done. Damn it. We can't reach that middle one. Anyone? How are we? Mm. There we go. I knew I'd forgotten something. Yeah, so once they get that done, uh, that will get bring the power in. Then we just need to dump in water. For water, I think... I'm not running water all the way from our water tank down the bottom. Instead, we're just going to stick in a... Just your standard issue little water tank right here. We have decided that Lacarius should be our pilot. Now, the reason we've picked Lacarius is... Well... They've got a decent amount of skill points available, they're good at science, and they're good at mechatronics. And as far as I can remember, the mechatronics part is important for the actual production of the databanks. And we don't want to have them having too many skills, because they might not be able to do what we want, so we just want to make sure they've got rocket piling so they can at least get into space. We don't really care about their suit sustainability at all. A little bit of advanced research can't hurt, but... Hmm. And we'll give you some improved tinkering, I suppose. A uh, bit of field research... I don't think you actually need any of these. We're just going to leave you at that. Um, yeah, that's that's it. you got rocket piloting, and you're good. Once you grab all of those skill points, we're going to chuck you into the rocket. We might change them a little bit later, but for now, we want to be real cautious about morale for this one. Excellent. Time for you to get into your rocket and get out of here. Okay, Lacarius, you are on board. Now, let's see if we can't launch you into space without messing things up too badly. We're going to change your destination to... Well, we just want you in orbit. Orbit is fine. Actually, wait, no. We're going to change that to right there. That's uh, just 
there's two planets they can see from that location. Uh, we will exit out, select, begin launch sequence. Damn it, clear construction path. Oh yeah, I forgot to open the doors. Hmm. One second. I think that's fine. We're just going to deconstruct them. It's too much effort to run power up to them, and oh, I do like that they've reduced the power requirements on these. I think they used to take a lot more, is it? Oh, never mind. It's done. Uh, once these are down, we can now launch the ship. Perfection. How are you looking? You are looking like you could begin your launch sequence. Off you go, buddy. And that means we get 120 watts now that it's free and clear. And we'll replace those, and while you're in space, we will be sure to put some power through to those. You can unequip the suit. Done. Now we need to do a couple of things. One thing I'd like to do is check out what your schedule is. You see, what I want them to do is work this area, and then when they're on lunch, what we can do is... Oh, wrong side. Once they go to lunch, that's when the gas pump over here activates. That means they're not using... Well, the electricity over here will only be used when they're actually on break time, and because that happens... It won't cause any blackouts on the grid, because if this gas pump and this was working at the same time, we wouldn't have enough power to run them both. I mean, actually, we do. We have 120 watts. Never mind. No, I was just being too cautious. Uh, and this is the pipe element sensor thing I was talking about. And you'll see it's filtering out the oxygen, but the carbon dioxide gets dumped out into the background of space, making it nice and easy to... Why are you... you... This is your bed. This is literally your bed. Why are you... It is assigned to you. Are you just taking an archaleptic nap just before bedtime? God damn <laughs> There you go. See, there was a bed right there. If you're going to be an archaleptic, at least, you know, be convenient about it. Anyway, they're going to start working on space science for us, which is good. In the meantime, I'm going to run a quick power cable up to the top of the map so that we can open the doors without actually causing a, an apocalypse next time. You, all the way up. This way we can open the doors when the duplicate comes back in the rocket. For now, they're going to be busy churning out as much of those data banks as they possibly can. We can actually start some research on the ground to help out. Uh, for our ground-based research, all we're really missing is... What is it? Data Analysis Research Orbital Data Collection Lab. And I'm thinking the first thing we're going to want to research is nuclear reactors, because of course we do. I mean, who doesn't want nuclear reactors? They're just the best. Okay, uh, for that, though, we actually have a bunch of data banks lying around the place. Where did we put them? Yeah, we've got 50, 82. And the reason we got those is because of, well, you find them in, when you scan volcanoes and things like that, or any of the vents and geysers, if you analyze them, you get some out of that, and you also get some from the buildings you find around the map belonging to Gravitas. So let's check ourselves in. I think one will fit in here. Virtual planetarium, done. That should knock us out nuclear reactors. Now, according to the wiki, we need about to spend about 9,000 plastic to get enough data points to knock out everything. So what we've done is we've equipped this laboratory with about 9,000 plastic, or the recommended number of amount of plastic. Oh, it's really slow. Ugh. We'll probably have to take them down every so often, especially once either the food or the oxygen starts to run low. While we progress science, there's a few things I should probably cover. Uh, we've eaten all the gold amalgam. Uh, all of the gold amalgam has been consumed by our smooth hatches. That does mean we have just absolutely enormous amounts of gold all lying around the place. We have 149 tons of gold just because of all of these smooth hatches. We haven't refined any using the metal refiners, we've just let the smooth hatches eat it all. So we've had to switch them over now to iron ore. Um, yes, we have a, a decent supply of iron ore that we're going to let them chow down on. 163 tons of the stuff. And if that doesn't work, we've got 420 tons of copper ore we can let them chow down on. But uh, yeah, they, they ate a lot. Uh, we're doing pretty good on the sulfur, and when it comes to sedimentary rock, I think we might actually be running low on sedimentary rock. We're down to 174 tons. Actually, never mind, I take that all back. And we have eight duplicates in training. Ugh, excellent. Soon we're going to have more labor force. That was really starting to annoy me. And for that, we're going to need to open up more atmos suits. What we've done is we set this to clearance vacancy only. Uh, this always confused me, like... You need, whatever it says up here is what's going on. So vacancy only means they won't try and come in here unless there's somewhere to dump their suit. As opposed to, and same thing over here, clearance vacancy only. That way we don't have to worry about them cross-contaminating. As in, if you don't set that up, they'll start coming back and dropping off suits here. And then once it's full, they'll just start dropping on the ground. And next thing you know, none of your places have any Atmos suits left. It gets really annoying. And uh, let's actually go over here and deconstruct this. Yeah, perfect. Oh, and let me make sure everyone's allowed in that should be. Yeah, I think I set this up correctly a while back. Perfect. 
All right, now we've got two ways out of our base, uh, though they can only come back in. Whatever way they leave, they'll have to come back in, roughly. And it does mean it's a shorter trip out to the farms, and we've got twice as many Atmo suits, so more of the duplicants can do more work. That's going to be even more important when the next eight dupes come online. One other thing we did in the background was... Ah! This aluminum volcano was still causing problems. It had overheat this occasionally, it was causing issues, so we threw in an aqua tuner. We gave up and we're like, you know what, we'll just have to do this easy way. We threw in some salt water because it was nearby. We didn't need any special coolant for this. And all we've got is thermal aqua tuner here. It is actually powered by the steam vents on, or the steam turbines on top of it. So this is completely self-powered. And all it does is it just cools down the steam turbines so they don't overheat. This thing just produces so much electricity. We need to do something along the, this line. And... Yeah, it seems to be staying pretty low down, and this this volcano has been dormant for a fair while, but there's still just enough latent heat left in this aluminum that every so often it kicks these into gear, they provide more power, and it keeps the battery topped up. They're handy, it's just, um, I kind of like stuff that's less complicated, and this is, uh, you know what, this is less complicated, I suppose, putting in just a single aqua tuner. It's just the problem, I, I think this aluminum volcano was just a little bit too hot for three steam turbines, and it's why it kept seizing up. No matter what I did, I put in... I put in temperature shift plates, I tried using aluminum piping through here, I also switched over the steam turbines to lead because it had a, a higher, was it, higher specific heat capacity so it would take longer for them to overheat, but it's just there's so much heat coming off this volcano, it just, it kept overpowering all of the steam turbines on top. We even started linking everything, putting the water down in different places, it didn't make a difference. This thing was just too powerful for it. I probably needed a fourth steam turbine, and that's just too big. Uh, oh, if I had to do this over again, two steam turbines and an aqua tuner would have been more than sufficient. Which means while we're waiting for that science to go ahead, we should probably tap into... Where is it? There's a cobalt volcano over here. Might want to take care of this real quick. Cobalt is very conductive and it's a great material, so... Quick cobalt volcano mont montage? This is going to be disturbingly similar to our normal ones, it's just uh, we've stuck in an aqua tuner. We'll have to power it up a bit at first to get the initial cooling loop nice and cool, but this is just some salt water we grabbed from right over here in this tank. It's a little bit warm to start, but it's fine, it'll cool this down. We'll have to spend a little bit of electricity to get it started, but then we don't really have to worry about it. We're not doing anything fancy, we're not even trying to cool the metals down very much. We just want this to not break ever. That was really quick, I should have done that about a hundred cycles ago. Could have had some cobalt by now, though, and uh, it's going to be 49 cycles before this thing is active again. Hey, we've got eight data banks out of it, though. We stuck in a couple of batteries as well. This is just to give it a little bit of tide it over between uh, activations, but this should work out just fine, and it'll help cool down this entire area. In fact, let's just cut off the power. I don't think it needs any more. And you can go there and... Done. Okay, how is our, uh, how is our rocket looking? You have 192 units. You still got 8,600 kilos of plastic left to process. That's going to take a while. Uh, Research-wise, we have already knocked out nuclear reactors. Where is it? Ah, nuclear reactors are donor reactor research, and we've also grabbed the diamond press. Not sure exactly where to go from here. I really do want to get Radbolt propulsion, though. What do we need for that? Eh, just jetpacks. Ooh, meteor blaster. I really want to try that out. Right, let's get go straight for Radbolt engines then. I appear to be done in time for the day. I should have had this video released already. Uh, yeah, this is sort of to make up for the one I never got out last week. I decided to, well, I needed to get another video out. I don't like missing episodes. It feels like, yeah, it feels unprofessional. You know what I mean? I'm going to go render this video and then in the background, I'm going to go tame these two iron volcanoes. I should have done this ages ago, but I figure, well, now's as good a time as anyway. Anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed your weekend and uh, good luck.